Previously, It seemed the only power that could destroy gamers were gamers themselves. Electro video input had evolved into video games, bringing joy to millions but only disdain to the Ultra Thinker. I would use my influence to change gaming itself, crippling old stalwarts and giving rise to a new dark age of gaming. At least you won't have to wait much longer. Lieberson. Oh, come now. Why stand on formalities, Retro Thinker? It's time you knew my real name and saw my true face. He's not an actual ninja. He's not even Asian. Dr. Beardo? So that happened. And after that, this. But why the deception? And can you, like, read us digest it for us? Cause, uh, I don't know about everybody else, but I've completely lost the thread at this point. This has been Master Ultra Thinker's intricate plan from day one. For you see, we needed champions of good to carry out a series of tasks we champions of evil could not. Anti-Thinker, your battle with the Overthinker and Wario's Woods was necessary to open a rift between dimensions, allowing the Vidspawn to invade Earthrealm. Uh-huh. Commissioner Bunnyface and the Overthinker may have thought they were blasting those critters back to their own dimension, but in fact, their life force came to us, so that we could convert them into the unlimited sentient power sources needed for the Justice Iron Shadow Militia shock troops. Oh uh, yeah, right, right. We kinda lost track of that subplot, I guess. Huh. Tell me about it. And Retro Thinker. Only you were pure of heart enough to pass through the Gamer's Gate and remove the Golden Axe, which Oh, by the way, were you truly surprised when the ultimate weapon didn't turn out to be this? The Master Sword? Fools, you know legendary weapons always come in pairs. Speaking of which... The ninjas, uh... They look different, right? He's given them Jism cybernetic upgrades. Destroy them. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> As I suspected, the Axe is indeed a formidable addition to your pathetic arsenal. But did you for a moment consider the cost of taking it? With the Axe removed from Wario's Woods, the binding spell becomes weaker by the hour. Meaning... Oh, no. Oh, yes. Soon, the Ultra Thinker will again be able to cross into our reality and establish his reign once and for all. Ugh. We gotta put this thing back, guys. Oh, but without it, how can you help to rescue your friend the rabbit? Commissioner Bunnyface, no! If you want him back, you'll have to fight for him. We'll be waiting at my place, protected by an army of Jism Stormtroopers. See you there, for the last time. Okay, this is obviously a trap. It doesn't matter. We've got to save the Commissioner. But there's not nearly enough power between us two. Omega Thinker! I come back to you now, at the turn of the tide. Hey, now that's more like it. But how? And I've brought you these special future pants, which will make the costume changes less time-consuming. Whose space-age fabrics will increase your dexterity and fighting skills. But no time to explain, Ancient Ones. Come with me. Here we are. There they are. Your friends are hopelessly outmatched, you must realize. Says you. Confidence. How human. Is this supposed to be the part where you force me to watch them lose? 
<laughs> no, I have a far more fiendish torment for you, Overthinker. Torture me? No. Kill me? No. Well? You shall spend your final moments answering viewer mail. Ugh. Are, are you sure you just don't want to kill me? Not that I think there's any great damning or discrediting of her work that needs to happen. I just think the nuances of representation versus exploitation versus empowerment versus objectification are more interesting and valuable to discuss than whether or not the person who asked the question somehow deserves to be terrorized. Johnny C asks, My favorite episode was 33, Building a Better Gamer. Are we still doing gaming wrong? What have we started to do right? Will you ever do a follow-up to it? Yes, we are. In fact, it's much worse. Stay tuned. Violet Winks asks, Amiibos, cool collectible or rip-off DLC disguised as an overpriced toy? Uh, yes. Match asks, What are your thoughts on the recent state of broken AAA games? Assassin's Creed Unity, Halo Master Chief Collection, Drive Club, being released? Disturbing, but expected. If quote-unquote hardcore gamers are going to keep pre-buying shit at near full price almost a year in advance before anyone has even been able to look at the game and still obsess over getting a copy on opening day regardless of whether you've got time to play it yet, this shit is going to keep happening. <laughs> Space Pirate JB asks, Do you or have you ever wanted to give up? Just stop being the overthinker? Stop being a gamer? I guess we'll find out in two more episodes, huh? Connor asks, Did you play Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze? And do you think it will revitalize the otherwise stagnant Donkey Kong series? <sighs> You know, I'll be honest, I tried really, really hard to like Tropical Freeze, but I think Donkey Kong Country Returns was honestly the better game. Jonathan asks, Which content creators are on your weekly, for example, YouTube watch list? Whose work format are you interested by? I don't know what weekly means at this point, but I like who I like. Well, extra credits, obviously. Everything Loading Ready Run does, Nostalgia Critic, Angry Joe, Epic Rap Battles, Linkara, definitely, Nostalgia Chick, actually pretty much everyone on Shea Apocalypse, the entirety of Screw Attack, all that definitely qualifies as my jam. Somebody want to ring the bell? Ben Binsis asks, Speaking of Call of Duty, what do you think is the next big thing? 
given the rapid de-evolution of the medium that brought us to the point of Call of Duty, I expect something similar to Ass the Movie from Idiocracy. Rathcore asks, Could certain gaming sites such as Kotaku and Polygon stand to update their code of ethics for something more resembling the SPJ? Hmm... No. Look, to the degree the recent clusterfuck over ethics was ever actually about ethics, which is not to say very much, it was about the pervasive myth that independent and or art house games get good reviews because creators in that scene were either too buddy-buddy with or outright bribing journalists, which is really stupid. I mean, the very idea of game review opinions being subject to outside influence. Well, it's certainly not coming from the indie scene. Honestly, what's happening is simply game journalism growing out of being primarily an enthusiast press. Critics don't like arty material that flatters their self-image as intellectuals because someone bribed them. They like it because they're critics. It's just game criticism falling into line with other types of criticism, where reviewers mainly dig artsy indie stuff, mainstream audiences dig disposable mega-budget crap, and every once in a blue moon they kind of agree. As far as ethics standards go, guys, it's video games, not a fucking CDC bulletin or the nuclear launch codes. Don't take bribes, don't plagiarize, the basics really should cover this one. DigiConjurer asks, what was your favorite moment of this series, and why? My favorite moment of the Game Overthinker was honestly not something that happened in any of the shows. It was the first panel at the first SGC that I attended. I hadn't really realized that that many people were watching or wanted to hear what I had to say and cared about video games and loved them in the same way that I did. It was a life-changing experience for me and one I've never been able to repeat, but one that has inspired every step I've taken since then. I haven't been able to move backwards from that course since I started, and I thank my fans for it because I don't plan to. Thank you. Xanthos Ray asks, I love being a gamer, but sometimes I'm ashamed of what gamers do. What can I do to stay proud of being who I am? Here's the thing. The whole concept of pride when it comes to hobbies, guys, a lot of us get it backwards. If you're good with you, then gamer pride should be about your connection validating gaming, not the other way around. Alright guys, cover me. I'm going in after Beardo. Oh no, it's the Robo Thinker. Oh hell no! They must have rebuilt them. Affirmative. RoboThinker technology is the basis of Justice Iron Shadow Militia. You noobs will be pwned. So here we are. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Master Sword against Golden Axe. For the first time, for the last time. Looks like my friends weren't as helpless as you thought, Ultra Thinker. Hmm. But they were exactly as foolish. What are you talking about? They and you might have had a chance attacking me directly, but now 
Not only have they exhausted their fighting strength. No. The barrier has been weakened enough to allow my return. No, they'll stop you, and even if they don't, I will. You will be dead. Thinker, he's... he's... dead! <laughs> People of Earth, I'm afraid it's Game over. So says the Ultra Thinker. Huh. So the Ultra Thinker is a 700 foot space gorilla. Makes about as much sense as anything else. It was him. He murdered the Overthinker. Huh. So this is death. Not as cold as I thought it would be. I, uh, I hope it doesn't make a difference that I haven't been to church in, like, 25 years. Oh, it matters. Welcome to hell. We have such wonders to show you. Well, uh... At least it can't get worse. Wonders like more viewer mail! <laughs> oh, come on!